Georgia at Texas, Saturday, 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 local time on ABC. It's one of the games of the year in college football, and this is still rarefied air for Texas. I think they're great. Most of you think they're great. Some of you think they're just pretty good. I think they're way up there. But you got to understand, this is still rarefied air for them. The quality of opponent this weekend will be nothing like they've seen so far this year, including in the Michigan game. We all know that. But also, do you realize, an early paper popper of a stat here, do you realize Texas's last win over an AP top five team at home was pre-Y2K? It was 1999. So a lot of things that have been a long time coming could be erased this weekend. So there was a mild concern I had in the preseason when I looked at Texas' schedule, which was otherwise pretty workable, and that was this two-week stretch. Man, the schedule makers are going to make them play OU and then Georgia in the span of, what, seven or eight days? Well, as it turns out, it doesn't matter because they, they just kind of rolled over Oklahoma and the second half of the game wasn't in doubt. So Nothing really got expended last week. Texas comes in here as full steam ahead as they possibly can. And then on the other hand, Georgia, while they've been hobbled a little bit, I don't mean banged up and injured. In some cases, yes. I just mean relative to the normal version of themselves, Georgia's looked a little hobbled, kind of a weird vibe from the team this year. But Georgia is still one of those teams with serious national title springboard potential. So every single year, someone hits their stride in late October, even after Halloween, early November. So maybe Georgia does this. So that's how we set the stage for this game. This was the script for Texas, though. So to get to this point, Quinn Ewers is in year three. That's what we hoped. We hope we got him and we build him up within the program. In year three, everything coalesces around him. They're stacked on both lines of scrimmage to the point where they lost those interior guys last year, and you still can't really run on Texas all that much. They lost two tailbacks in the preseason, and guys, they're still running the ball. I think, Jesse, what are they, 40th in the country? So they're still running the ball fairly well, too. They're big, they're physical, they're fast. They don't sacrifice one of those to have the other two. They've got six pass catchers with at least one 40-yard catch on the resume this year. They've got seven players with a rush of over 20 yards on the resume this year. So that presents a problem for obvious reasons. And even the best defensive programs, even if they're not putting up the best stats, even the best defensive programs, they got to make a decision on Georgia. So I'm going to talk about it as we get into it. I've been able to count on two things with Georgia for a long time, and I wonder if I can count on them in this game. The first thing, at least in recent Kirby Smart history, the first thing I've come to be able to count on with Georgia is I think they're going to have a dependable ground game. That's what I've trained my mind to think based on watching them. Last four years. 36th, 19th, 21st, and here they are 92nd in the country in rush yards per game this year. So there's something I have been able to depend on that thus far I haven't really been able to depend on. They don't have a 100-yard rusher in any game this season. And even against Mississippi State, Mississippi State is bad against the run. Georgia attempted it 24 times, didn't crack the 100-yard mark. Uh, total, total team effort against Mississippi State. And Texas is really good against that anyway. I mean, Vernon Broughton's been really, really good for them this year, too. So the first thing I've come to expect from Georgia, and that is they can run the ball fairly well. They haven't really done this year. The second thing that I've come to depend on with Georgia is they've been able to limit chunk plays through the air, historically, under Kirby Smart. And they've been top 25 yards per play allowed last three years on that front. They are 68th right now. So there are two really dependable facets of what has made Kirby Smart's Georgia great that so far this year have been really, really average by college football standards, not just Georgia standards. Having said that, this is a springboard team. Doesn't guarantee it's going to happen, but I guarantee you there are, there are facets of this team that are capable of being a whole lot better than they have been. All right, and you got one of the best coaching staffs in the country in Athens, Georgia, and you got this kind of game circled. Like, this is the kind of stuff that on one hand you could look at and say, oh, we've been this this poor in these areas, and now we got to play Texas. Or you can look at it and say, you know what? Yeah, we've been this poor in some of these areas, but what better moment for it to turn around than Texas? And quite honestly, there are a few teams who have been flawed so far this year that should feel that way in a big moment this weekend. Georgia's just one of them. However, because of that, and because I don't know if I can count on those things, there is zero doubt that if the dust settles on Saturday night and Georgia's won this game, Carson Beck's probably had the best game of his season 
He's played his A game, whatever that means to you. Because Texas has got number two pass defense in the country. Okay, on paper, stuff right here, Carson Beck's in for a long night. If the game's played on this, Texas has allowed one passing touchdown this year. Here's the follow-up. They have faced four passing offenses in the 100s. So they haven't faced a top 30, top 40, probably top 50 quarterback in the country. You'll face one of the best in the game in Carson Beck. He'll face one of the best defenses. He'll face the best defense he sees all year in Texas Saturday night. He's just got to have the game of his season. And he's got to play at an A level, not turn the ball over, obviously, be big on third down, yards per attempt needs to be high. So all that's got to happen, and it can happen. Carson Beck can do that. It, these games, every single season, you'll see something happen, you'll see a matchup happen, where elsewhere you thought the opposition had edges, mild to moderate edges, here, 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 and here, but what happened? What happened is that quarterback went off and he covered up and he masked a lot of it because this is football and that position's really valuable. So Carson Beck has to do that. And number two, another thing that has plagued Georgia so far, I know it sounds really Georgia-centric here, but these are the keys. Texas is set. I don't have nearly as many questions about Texas. I got questions about Georgia. Namely, why can't you guys score early? Like, what is it about a fast start that Georgia is, is so allergic to? They can flip the script totally if they just start fast. It would be so weird, but also a welcome change for Georgia fans to turn on this game and, oh, we're up 7 to nothing. Oh, we're up 10 to 3. It hasn't happened. It's wild. Producer Jesse and I pulled up the game logs for Georgia today and just looking at what they've averaged in first quarters versus second, third, and fourth quarters. It's wild. So the other thing to think about here is Quinn Ewers. The other thing to think about is the Texas offense. The thing that I think is probably one of the most fun matchups of this season is just watching Steve Sarkeesian against Schumann and, and Kirby Smart. Uh, because those are, those are two sides of a ball with five-star coaching and play calling, and they go up against each other. You don't get that very often. So, I mean, if you do get it, it's normally late in the postseason. We happen to get it here in, what, week eight? Remember last year, Texas was good. Texas made the playoff last year. They got in the semifinal, and they played Washington. And Washington did something to them that Georgia has to do. It's the reason I mentioned a fast start. Washington put them in a position where they did feel pressure. They had to keep up. Uh, Penix and Washington kept delivering blows through the air, and Texas had to keep up. And it's not that they were incapable of it, although Ewers had – a, a less than desirable game accuracy rise that night, but that is born through the pressure of having to keep up. Can Georgia put them in that kind of position? Uh, offensively, can Georgia do that? And can they do it especially if the ground game's not there? Because you saw against Alabama when Georgia had to play catch up, they were able to do it, but also in that game they end up minus three turnovers, minus two or minus three turnovers. And so obviously you can't afford that here. So that's one thing to watch, and that's the great unknown. The whole turnover variable always is. But there's another thing, too. Um, how, how can I put this metaphorically? So against Texas, you've got what? I mean, you've got six pass catchers with at least one catch of 40-plus yards. You've got seven guys, like I said, who have had at least one 20-yard rush. So it's basically like looking at a dam with 13 holes in it, and you try and plug it with 10 fingers. That doesn't work. What you can do, though... What Georgia can do against Texas is try and divert the water, period. You know, you get to the quarterback or you affect the quarterback and all these weapons don't really matter nearly as much. So the pressure rate has to get ramped up. Getting to the quarterback has to get ramped up. Georgia does not sack the quarterback. At the very least, you got to affect him. you got to get physical with these guys in their routes, but also they're good at that. And they're good at making contested catches and you've got some youth in your secondary that Alabama was able to take advantage of, you just got to fight. Ball's in the air. You just got to fight. Can they find a way to mess with Quinn Ewers is the bigger question to me. I don't think anyone's going to really holistically match up with Texas's skill guys. I think that also there's another thing in play here. It's going to sound disrespectful. That's why I brought Kirby Smart along on the show tonight. Uh, so I'll let him say it instead of me. Colin, I'm going to have you tee up the Kirby Smart sound, and then I'll tell you what I have to say on the other side. They're the complete package on defense. They're really consistent. Like, there's not, like, 
they don't give up explosives. They're really good in the red area. They hard to run the ball on. I mean, the consistency you watch them play with, it reminds me of you know some of our better teams here, our best teams here. I'm like, man, they they they're good on D, they're good on O, they're good on special teams, and they're playing at a high level. Yeah, I think Texas is more Georgia than Georgia is this year. The Georgia teams in the past few years, the way they looked, Kirby's telling you right there, Texas flat out looks like we've looked in our best years. And he's talking about defense. He's not even talking about offense. Colin, let's take a look at what the model thinks. The fan duel number is Texas minus three and a half. Model thinks it should be higher than that. Model's got Texas minus five. I think Texas is going to win this game. I think Texas will cover in the game. I think Texas is the best team in the country right now. Now, the model may disagree with me a little bit. We'll talk about the JP poll later. But I think you're looking at the best team in the country here. I respect the fighting spirit of this Georgia program. There's no, there's no shock here if they end up winning the game. But I think there are too many small to moderate edges that Texas holds, not to mention home field here as well. They did not get banged up. They didn't get pushed to the wire against Oklahoma last week. And so... Georgia's back kind of against the wall more so than Texas. I just, I don't think all that stuff matters in this one. And also, you can look at it as people doubting you. I guarantee you most of the country will pick Texas in this game, just like they picked Bama. Um, but it didn't matter. You still got to go win the game. Like, what if everyone picks the favorite and they're just right? I'm going to pick Texas here. I assume the rest of the country will as well. Someone out there will pick Georgia and cross their fingers they're lucky and right, but I'm taking Texas until proven otherwise. I think that's the best team in the country. And if they have home field along with that, I'm taking them against anyone, Georgia included.